What's up guys, we got a Lexus here, NX200T Turbo. We're gonna do the rear brake pads, so in the back, we got uh, this electrical caliper here. So this is the baby that's gonna come off. So we're not putting a scan tool on it. We're not gonna give this thing a power. We're gonna just turn this baby manually from inside here. And it's the same procedure for the opposite side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this caliper and uh, we're gonna disconnect this. So I'm gonna show you the part numbers and everything. So once I go step by step, so let me gather everything, get my some of my tools. So we're gonna need a 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter. We're just changing the brake pass today. The customer don't want the rotors, that's fine. And I did let go of the brakes. As you can see, it's hard to turn, but I can turn it. So all you have to do is once you park the car, press that brake button down. I'll show you that at the end of the video because I forgot to show that on the camera. So this brake is already released. Only thing is you're not gonna be able to compress that piston without uh, turning the caliper back. But anyways, this brake pad is done compared to the other side here. Inside it seems like it's, it's all right, but uh, I guess this one took a beating. Let's get this job going. So first, what we want to do is, um, I do want to disconnect this little guy right here so we don't stretch this cable. And just push down on this uh, tab here and pull out the connector. So it's, it's two wires, it's positive, negative. That's all it is if you want to hot wire it. But anyways, Let's remove the caliper next. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove the two bolts on this caliper. There's one over here, so I guess we're gonna have to put a socket on this baby. Um, this thing doesn't want it. Okay, it doesn't want it, okay. Socket or even this is not gonna fit on it. There's not enough clearance there. So we're gonna get a socket for this guy, a deep socket. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna try a different temp. So I'm gonna take off this bottom bolt here instead of the top bolt and this thing is spinning with it everything is not going my way so far so what i like to do here is sometimes uh i can't get a wrench okay my camera didn't capture so what i did was i put this on and i used the wrench to turn this get this bolt off sometimes the camera doesn't want to capture anything so once you do that you should be able to Pull this caliper off. Okay, let's see how this baby feels by coming off. Okay, it might be stuck in there. So I am gonna have to get that top bolt off somehow, so wait. Let's manage that little guy. Somehow, some way. Okay, so. I didn't want to go get a socket for that, which I didn't want her to do, but I guess we got to do what we got to do. 14 millimeter deep socket, it is, and now uh, he's going to turn on me. Oh, God. What am I going through today? Believe me, uh, even if you have a scan tool to command this piston, you still got to do this. So I guess the caliper just needs to come out straight forward. Okay, seems like it's coming out. I'll just use the socket now. Alone. There you go. And we'll remove this. Now, we still got issues with this guy, but it should come off. Let me go get a flat high screwdriver. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna try to get this caliper off. Hey, there you go, and that's how this baby comes off. So it's not a big deal here. So we're gonna work on it more. So we got our caliper off here, and that's how you guys are gonna remove this little guy. This is what this baby look like here. Electrical caliper on this Lexus, and 
This guy is off. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go get some Allen keys and we're gonna remove. There's no, there's no metal on these cars. I don't know why they make these cars freaking all plastic. Can't even hang my light. Okay, so I got myself an Allen key here. This is a what number is this? Five millimeter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this little bolt right here. And there's one more back here. And if it doesn't come off with your drill, you might have to put a hand power into it. And these two little guys will come off. Put them safe somewhere. Once this come off, you can't go wrong here, okay? You cannot go wrong here. You're gonna pop this guy off. Very simple. So this guy is gonna simply just come off. It is gonna be a little, it's been there for too long. If I screw it up, I screw it up. What can I do? Is there any more bolts? Nope, it's just seized up in there from the rust and corrosion. <sighs> All right, it probably got belts and stuff inside. Ha. Okay, so I'm gonna probably use a screwdriver and that seal you see that seal right in the middle that's what was causing trouble here for me so that's all there it is this is a motor it has a belt inside and a one or two gear that turn so just keep it straight and put this baby away just like that and if you need to replace this actuator that's it it's two bolts so remember this seal i put a little bit of lube on it and now we're gonna look into the back here i am gonna have to go get a tool for this so what we're gonna do is next, we're gonna turn this baby and this piston should go in. We're probably gonna have to push it at the same time. So this little guy here, this I picked up from my uh, years back from my uh, Sears. It's probably like 25 bucks and you get all this. I used it on Axle for Audis and Volkswagen years back. And this thing fits right in there. And the piston's coming out. And now the piston, okay, I'm gonna have to get a clamp for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this over here. So you can't use a C clamp on this little guy. You could they, they got cheaper. This is like 30 bucks tool here. And you can find it on Amazon. So I'm simply gonna turn this so the piston's coming out. I'm gonna turn it the other way around. And the piston is going in. As I turn it, it goes in. There you have it. So once it goes to the end, that's when you stop. And that's it. I don't think it's gonna go any further. We're done there. And this is the tool you're gonna need. Take care of this actuator right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do from here on is, uh, gonna put a little bit of lube on this seal. Oil, WD-40 will do, anything greasing will do. Little bit of lube on that seal again this is a lexus if you got toyota same procedure same procedure for all of them even i have done uh i have done uh range rover same way okay now what we're gonna do is first of all this caliper goes like that remember this thing was facing up so you might have to uh maneuver this around a bit to capture once it's in there, it's in there, bada bing, bada boom. What we're gonna do next is, we're gonna take the two little screws, and then we are ready to install the brakes. And at the end, we will calibrate the brakes. So we're gonna just put the two little screws that belongs in here, this is one. And there's one that goes in the bottom here. So make sure your actuator sits straight and make sure you tighten them evenly don't jam one all the way and then the other one. So I got these pretty much all the way in. So all I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna just give them a little snug with my electric drill here. That's all they need. They're not gonna come off. Bada bing. Okay. <laughs> and I'm trying to get this guy off. I did the same thing to it earlier when I took it out. There you go. And I still need to tighten the other one. And what I'm gonna do here is, 
with the second one. I'm gonna do the same thing. Remember, I do have videos on Hondas. Giving this thing a 12 volt. Uh, try not to give it 12 volts. Try to give it like a seven volts. And I did give it 12 volts, but my jump box is weak. You could do it that way without taking all this off. I use both of these methods for these guys. So now we're gonna get to the bottom of this. And we're gonna actually replace our uh, brake pads here. So what I wanna do is I wanna remove the brake pads. So if you can see the brake pads are down to uh, almost, almost close to minimum. And I don't like to throw these brake pads out till I'm completely done. Sometimes you don't know which pad goes where. So this thing does not have any brake wear indicators. So hopefully that's how the process is. So let me go get new brake pads and I will show you those brake pads. Okay, we're using Evolutions. That's the brake pads we're using. There's a part number right there and it's written over here as well. Inside they give you a brake or uh, how to brake in the brake pads. And uh, it does come with the hardware, but I usually make a decision here. So in this case, I do not want to change this hardware. The reason is because these are pretty solid, but I do need to clean them. So in here, we're going to have four brake pads, two and two for the opposite side. And there's our brake pads on this guy. I'm going to put these to the side for now, and we're going to start cleaning these. So what I want to do here is I like to go deep in there where the pad is going to sit. The rest of this stuff, I'm not even worried about. Same thing up here, small little wire brush. It's only gonna take that much of an effort to clean these, okay? It's always a good idea to clean these. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Once you do that, you wanna take some brake cleaner. I like to spray this baby so all the dirt and dust is gone in the water. Bada bing, bada boom. Next step, guys. What I like to do is take two brake pads Put one in here, see how it fits. If the brake pad does not fit nice and easy, meaning you see how with the tap of a finger, then you need to, if it doesn't fit with the tap of a finger, you need to file a bit here, here. Okay, let me try this one as well. Should be very easy for me to fit this guy. Okay, let's see. So you gotta go below a little bit. You're gonna have to manage this area yourself. And that's it, that's how simple these are. So these, since these are good, what I like to do is take them back out one at a time. I like to put a little bit of greasing here so they can slip and slide much, much, much easier and better. You can even, if you want, you can put some here and here. Same thing on the inside. Um, then you're going to reinsert this brake pad. Reinsert this brake pad same way you took off. And it's going to go in the same way. Okay, there you go. Same thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to get some greasing. A little bit of here. A little bit of right there. Again, a little bit right here and a little bit right there. And then take this brake pad and should go right in. Okay, before we put this caliper on, what you want to do is you want to pull out this. You want to look at this, okay? This pin, this slider pin should slide in and out smoothly. Okay, if it doesn't have greasing, make sure you put some greasing on this. And the top one has a boot here, so this pretty much is it's pretty free in here. This is how I like moving these little guys. They move freely. Make sure the boot go captures onto the pin. Okay, so we're pretty much done there. So what I want to do next is I want to put some greasing here on the outer edge of this brake pad on both both of these brake pads. Only on the outer, nothing that's gonna meet the surface of the water. Now, easy part. Take your caliper. Put this baby on. It should go on much easier than it came off. And then we're gonna get, we're gonna get two bolts. And you're probably gonna have to pull, push these pins in so it can go in place. Okay, and same thing up here. Push this pin in. And that's it. Once you get this baby in, let's try to get the bottom one in first so it can hold up for us. There you go. So this baby is nice and smooth in there. And from here on, if you want to torque these babies, you can torque these babies. If you want to do it by hand, you can do it by hand. So I am gonna tighten these by hand. So pretty much, if this moves, I'm gonna have to put my vice grip on this as well. So it does turn with it. So what I'll do is, uh, uh, Grab a socket. I'm gonna snug this in first. 
all the way and if it turns I'm gonna put my I am gonna put vice grip to hold this remember you don't want to lose leave anything loose here break is critical break is something you don't want to play around with okay we got this the wrong way okay I'm gonna have to tighten up my vice grip Try not to damage the boot, try to capture the, only the lip. Try not to be between the, on the bolt because it will not let you tighten the bolt because it will get compressed between the caliper and the bolt and it will leave a gap behind, right in between. So this is pretty much, okay, I'm gonna have to, I need some spacing here. And there you go, I don't even have to hold the wife's grip. It will hold itself. There you go. This is nice and tight. And I'm gonna do the same thing in the bottom. And this baby will simply get tight and you're all done and set. Do not, do not forget. Do not forget to put this connector in. Make sure it clicks. I had some people do brakes watching my video on Honda's and they forgot. I got Honda Civics, I got uh, cords. I got, um, uh, what was the Range Rover, Land Rover, all the same procedure. So this is, we're pretty much done here. Make sure this is tight. That's tight. To chain the rotor, you just got two bolts. You can be watching my rotor videos on uh, Toyota's. Anyways, thank you for watching my videos. And uh, before we go, I am going to, we're going to go inside the vehicle once I'm done both sides. We're going to put command this to come on and off, on and off a few times. It's going to grab and release, grab and release. And that's how you're going to calibrate it once you see it. I'm gonna show you that part. So pretty much the tools we used was a deep socket, 14 millimeter with a 3 8 dry ratchet. Ah, uh, this is a funny looking ratchet, but you can have anything. We had this little, this is a 12 points, and uh, these are just like the Allen keys, our torque keys, but these are 12 points. And uh, this is uh, the size I use, so pretty much this is the third size. If we take this little guy and so this is one, two, three, and this is the shortest. As you can see the tip, look at that. That's what it looked like. I don't have any numbers or anything on these, but it is what it is. You can find this guy. It says M8 on this, okay? Eight millimeter, I guess. M8 on this one. I also use this 14 millimeter gear wrench. Use the vice grip. I used, I did not use a flat head screwdriver, but have it handy. I use this little fork. It just, you can either have one of these. This is the reason why I got it. So that's it. And we used the wire brush, uh, which is not in the picture here. We use this uh, five millimeter Allen here with my electric drill. You could use this with the ratchet if you don't have a drill. We use greasing. And I use the compress tool, okay? They're just a compress tool. Piston compress. I had it here somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Ah, uh, there it is. So this is the last thing we use right here. A whole bunch of crap here. Anyways, that's it. And we're gonna calibrate. Okay, so I completed all four brakes. Um, we still gotta calibrate the rear. Calibration meaning just bring it back to where it's supposed to be at. So pretty much what I wanna do is right now, our tire is free playing. So first, since we did all four brakes, what we wanna do is you want to pump the pedal several times. It's going to get hard after four or five times. And after that, what I want to do here is, I don't want to start the car. I do want to put the car in accessory. So don't press on the brake pedal. Put the car in accessory. Do not press the brake pedal, like I said. Now you can press the brake pedal. Okay, I'm going to redo that again. So we got the car in accessory. I had the brake on, but the music came on, so I'm redoing it. We're going to turn off the brakes. You heard it. Put on the brake. The light's going to illuminate red. Turn off. Do it two to three times. I got my foot brake. Car is on accessory only. Engines are running. Foot on the brake. We're going to put the brake on. The brake is on, so we got the sign of the brake there. So what we're going to do is... I am going to go out of the car. I am going to try to turn this wheel, which I can't because the e-brake, the parking brake, electric brake is on. Same thing here. Should not turn on. 
But, but, okay. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna turn off the parking brake. Okay, this is what I did originally when I did the brakes and I shut the engine, I shut the accessory and everything off. And that's how my brakes was off. So now we know the tires grab, but we're gonna just confirm that the tires do let go. So we should not have no brake on these. There you go, perfect. You should not have any brake lights or anything in the dash. If you do have it, you probably forgot to connect the connectors or you damaged something, but that's how simple this baby is. Thank you for watching my video, guys. Take a test drive. The brakes might work a weird noise because the pedal probably brake pass on our older rotors. But other than that, you should be fine and uh, you shouldn't hear any scraping or anything like that, nothing crazy. Within a one mile, if there is any weird noise, it should go away from that rust and stuff.